So I'd like to share with you today the most divine spiritual experience that I've had to date. And you wouldn't believe it, but it happened in a jail cell. It's Retreat and Grow Rich, the podcast. I'm Darla Ledoux, best-selling author, coach, and retreat leader. And I'm on a mission to normalize transformation on the planet, one intimate retreat at a time. This show is dedicated to the coaches, consultants, healers, leaders, and light workers who are here to hold space for the truth that transforms lives and get paid for it. Expert retreat and business tips, strategies, stories, and magic. It's your weekly mini retreat delivered right to your ears. Let's do this. Hello and welcome. This is Darla Ledoux, host of Retreat and Grow Rich, the podcast, and your guide for this episode today. This episode is part of our Transforming Out Loud series. The Transforming Out Loud series was something I developed in alignment with my mission to normalize transformation on the planet. And my mission within my business is to normalize transformation on the planet one intimate retreat at a time. I believe small retreats are the best way to heal and shift and grow. That being said, my mission is broader than that. It's really about helping people to understand and feel empowered to know how we work as humans and how we work in partnership with spirit or the universe or um, God or energy, however you like to think about it, but how we actually operate so that we are feeling empowered to create the results we really want in life. If you've ever seen someone go from having one life circumstance one day to something completely different the next, it's likely because they transformed something within them, within their thinking, within their energy field that made them available for a completely different result. And that's the core of transformation. We are never stuck, we are never victims. We are always at source of our experience. And we are kind of doing this dance in partnership with spirit to open up whole new levels of awareness or whole new levels of consciousness, which ultimately changes how we interact with the world and our experience of feeling connected, of feeling alive, feeling peaceful, feeling joyful, feeling truly fulfilled, all of those things that we seek as humans, the more we embrace this journey of transformation, the more easily those things will come. And one of the issues that I've seen is that we don't actually embrace the experiences that ultimately could be for our greatest good because it's not like normal to do this. And I spoke in the first episode in this series about the time I got divorced and I went through this experience of leaving my marriage, knowing that I could go through the experience being really angry and upset at what had happened to me, or I could go through the experience really with this perspective of this is happening for me and what can I learn from this? How can I take this? as healing medicine so I can grow. Now, in reality, there were times I experienced it both ways, but most of the time, I really saw the growth opportunity and the healing available in my experience. So today's episode is no different, but it's more recent and maybe even a little more dramatic. This episode I've entitled, And Then I Got Arrested. Ah, let's just breathe that in for a moment, shall we? And then I got arrested. So I'd like to share with you today the most divine spiritual experience that I've had to date. And you wouldn't believe it, but it happened in a jail cell. So I want to take you back and share this experience. It's not that long ago when I was at a wedding. And we attended this family wedding and we um, knew we were going to be kind of out of town traveling for this wedding. Out of town, it was about 90 minutes away. 
And so knowing we would be traveling and knowing how weddings are, we booked an Airbnb. So we would have a place to stay, you know, local at the wedding. The thing that we didn't do is stop and consider the fact that the Airbnb wasn't actually on site at the wedding. It was about a mile away. So fast forward, wedding ends, we kind of draw straws for who's going to drive. Now I had had some drinks at this wedding and I, you know, over a long period of time, etc., I felt fine to drive. Um, and so I got in the car and I drove. The issue is the whole family was gathering at this other um, venue. So I decided to stop there and say hello. And so I just stopped there and chatting with the family and they poured me a glass of wine, which I don't even drink wine, but for whatever reason, I wanted to be part of the family. This is my in-laws actually. And so I had another glass of wine, got in the car, driving literally around the corner, like to our Airbnb and I got pulled over. And needless to say, you got this in the title, I got arrested. So I won't go into the whole story about this, but I was arrested, I was brought to jail. Uh, My wife was actually asleep in the back seat of the car, which thankfully meant um, they did not impound my car, which would have been a next step, but instead they woke her up and um, she woke up to me in handcuffs on the side of the road. Um, certainly terrifying and um, so they woke her up and they drove my car to the Airbnb and I I kid you no joke not that this matters they say most accidents you know occur within a mile of the home etc but the drive was literally like to the next light and take a right and there was the house so we almost made it Anyway, I want to get to the interesting part of this story. So um, they handcuffed me. They put me in the back of the car. They dropped Kimmy off at the Airbnb. They took the car keys so she wouldn't drive, and they brought me to jail. They took my blood. Um, While they were taking my blood, funny story, I had the um, wherewithal to say a prayer to my blood cells for um, only the sober blood cells to go into the needle. Yes, I said this, Um, and it turned out my blood actually was contaminated. So, you know, perhaps my prayer did something, but it didn't actually help my case. Um, And then they put me in the cell. So here I am in this kind of large cell, actually, um, with just a concrete floor and a toilet in the corner. Filthy, filthy. They took my shoes and they took my hoodie. So I was left in just a small sundress on this cold concrete floor for like hours, um, about seven hours, actually. And from there, I got very excited because after that, they they um, moved me into another cell to be discharged. And in the other cell, I thought, OK, I'm, it's time. It's like I'm almost ready to get out of here it's miserable and they actually gave me back my hoodie thankfully and my shoes so I'm in the other cell for discharge for a good additional six hours now the reason I'm sharing these details is this is part of my spiritual experience because what I haven't shared yet is that literally 24 hours before this experience I was on a call with my coach and in this call with my coach, we talked about my relationship to time. This was something that had been coming up for me in my work and in my business around my relationship to time and this feeling that I always had, like I just had to hurry up and survive this next thing and get on to the next thing, which then that was going to be enjoyable. Only I've been in business nine years now, and that idea of hurry up and survive this thing so you can get on to the next thing that will somehow be better had been happening the entire time to the point where it was 
really making me crazy, which is why it came up in my coaching call. So here's what had surfaced in my coaching call. I got present to this memory or this experience that I'd had as a kid of what I would call, you know, surviving time. And what happened was my parents divorced when I was young. And for a long time, my mom was a single mom. And she, you know, was kind of managing life the best she could, I'm imagining, and was figuring out what to do with me. And my dad was given some sort of partial custody. So sometimes I would be spending time with him and only he wasn't reliable and honestly not safe. Um, That's for a whole other (laughs) episode, but he had no business raising a little girl. That said, sometimes I would be with him, but sometimes I would be with one of his sisters or one of his other sisters or my mom's sister. I spent a lot of time with different aunts, with my grandma. Um, and I went to just a lot of different places. And I, I really had this feeling of being shuffled around a lot. But the thing was, for whatever reason, you know, the attitude in my family about kids was not that they needed to be communicated with. In other words, no one told me what was happening or what to expect, and probably they didn't know. So that meant I would be dropped off at my aunt's house, and I would never know how long I would be there before someone would pick me up and take me somewhere else. So there was this constant sense of disempowerment around my own time and my expectations and my ability to like feel comfortable and ease into and be present with whatever was going on. It was like whenever I was present with whatever was going on or enjoying something, it would be time to leave. It would be taken away. And often I was put in situations, like I said, that weren't safe and weren't comfortable. And in that time frame, especially, I really felt in survival, like, Um, whether it was being with family members that I really didn't know very well, you know, they all knew each other, the cousins, and I was kind of dropped in every now and then, or it was, um, yeah, just being somewhere that, that literally I felt physically unsafe because people weren't sober, (laughs) for example. So I developed in this cellular memory of surviving time and it just became a habit, right? It's like, if I can just kind of white knuckle it and get through this until the next thing happens, maybe the next thing will be somehow better than this thing. But I never really knew and I never really had a sense of control. So I would kind of make up ways to be in control as much as possible of the thing I was doing but I would never really relax into it. And if you're watching this on video, you know I have enjoy the journey in my background. Um, I would never really relax into it and let myself enjoy the journey because it just was too emotionally challenging if I would relax and experience something and then have it ripped away. So all of these memories had come rushing back to me in this coaching call. And I really set the intention of healing this. I got very present to the impact of being constantly on to the next thing in my mind and not present to what was currently happening. And it was like a visceral feeling in my stomach. Um, hurry up, you know, hurry up and get this over with, hurry up and get this over with. And I could see how it was happening my whole life. And I'm curious, I just want you to think about this. Maybe you relate to this exact example, but perhaps there's something else for you that, um, that you relate to this visceral experience that you've experienced over and over your whole life, kind of like Groundhog Day. So in this call with my coach, I discerned this and I really saw how surviving time was something I wanted to heal. It was something I wanted to release. It was something I just honestly didn't want to keep recreating in my life. 24 hours later, I wind up in a jail cell 
Now, you know, it's not funny. It was horrible um, in terms of like the physical discomfort that I experienced. And honestly, this whole process of going through being arrested, going to court, all of that has been a whole other eye-opening challenge, which honestly, I'm like super proud of how I've been going through it. And I'll share a little bit about that in a minute. But the immediate experience was exactly the feeling inside that I'd had as a kid surviving time. I didn't know. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't planning for it. I was literally ripped out of my experience of life and taken to jail. I um, had no, they did not communicate with me whatsoever about what was happening. I had no idea how long I would stay there. It felt really painful, like I could only survive. There was nothing to distract me. Um, And even when I moved to the new cell, and in that new cell, feeling like, okay, now I'm going to get out, but then continuing to not get out and really not be able to get accurate information about my status. Um, And in addition, Kimmy had actually lost her cell phone in an Uber. So when I even got a phone call from the cell, it just kept going to voicemail. So there was literally no communication. I didn't know if I was going to be picked up or anything. Um, I had pretty good faith (laughs) in that, but I really didn't know. So literally took me back to this experience as a kid. And what was so amazing about it is I could see it while it was happening. Like I could recognize the spiritual nature of this experience while it was happening. And I could pause and observe and rather than get upset and angry, which happened from time to time, I was able to practice being present, practice, you know, being in the experience for what it was without, you know, stressing about it. And um, first of all, I could see my own like spiritual growth and development in the in those moments. Um, But I also got to experience surviving time in a whole different way where, yes, it did feel like survival at times, but I could really bring this level of peace and presence to the experience that I I didn't even know was possible. Um, I was drinking, and my blood test did come back to show I was just over the legal limit, um, which honestly, even though at the time I didn't feel like I was, and, and when I first got in the car, I, I believe I was fine, um, which it doesn't really matter. But, um, as I sat in the jail cell, I could kind of tell I was starting to sober up. So I actually got, you know, <laughs> that it was probably right that I was there. Um, So I could really let go of the anger and frustration um, at the injustice, which still, you know, to a certain degree feels true, um, given all of the facts of the case. Um, But from a, you know, spiritual standpoint, and also from a standpoint of really wanting people to be safe and drive safely, um, I totally get it. I totally get it. So with that, um, I want to share a little bit more about the lessons for me. So it really shifted this idea around my relationship with time. And I have a retreat called the Lazy Bee Retreat, which is really about working really effectively and efficiently because we're trusting spirit to guide us. And... um, In order to be an effective leader for that retreat, this was part of my healing, is to release this, you know, surviving time feeling, right? It's totally inconsistent with the lazy bee. So I have allowed that that time to really infiltrate my cells (laughs) and my cellular memory so that when I have downtime and free time, I can actually breathe and relax and rest and enjoy without feeling like I should be doing something else. 
um, which has been amazing. Another thing that has happened, and um, this is really part of what's inspiring this Transforming Out Loud series as well, is um, two things. Good girls don't go to jail. Good girls don't go to jail. So one of my gifts and also struggles in life has been being a good girl right? I got good grades. I, you know, was a good student, like the, te you know, teacher's pet. I um, did all the right things in life. I got the good degree and the good job and, you know, was a good employee. And um, I don't know if I would still be a good employee after being in business for, for some time, but I really was good, right? And in my family, there's three of us um, siblings I'm the good one. I'm the responsible one. I'm the oldest. I'm the one who takes care of things, all of that. And so for me, you know, going to jail is bad. <laughs> and clearly <laughs> I had to embrace another side of myself. Like I, I made these choices and this is what happened. So there was also some healing available around this good girl persona that has honestly freed me to do the Transforming Out Loud series to we're in the middle of a campaign right now that's all about retreat fails and talking people out of hosting retreats because if you're not prepared to do this kind of work you shouldn't go there and um, I know it's just the tip of the iceberg the beginning of me unleashing the part of me that would have shut herself down in order to be per perceived as the good girl so really you know having a dui on my record frees me i don't love it but it frees me in a certain way and i remember really clearly this conversation i had with kimmy after she picked me up from jail and um, and we were eating at McDonald's, which lets you know the desperation, desperate times. Um, and we're having this conversation and Kimmy said to me, she said, it should have been me. I'm the one who belongs in jail, not you. And I think this is really interesting. My mother-in-law was mortified to think about, you know, poor me in jail. And while on the one hand, I feel like lovely that they think I'm above, you know, bad behavior and think I'm this amazing human, which I am, by the way, I am a fucking amazing human. Um, but there's also a way in which that whole idea of being mortified that, oh, Darla would have to go through this experience actually shows me the box that I've been put in, that I've put myself in of being a good girl. And, you know, quite honestly, is it really that fun? I don't think so. So it really made me conscious of breaking out of that box. And honestly, it's not a new box for me. Like I've seen it before. I've seen before the way in which my wanting to be liked and look good and, you know, make sure I'm beyond reproach, like, totally freaking gets in the way of doing business so guess what now I am a criminal so fabulous <laughs> we can just let that one go um, the other thing that that conversation opened up for me was actually to see how Kimmy sees herself right and this idea that she's the one that would belong there gave me a lot of information about some part of her inner world that was screaming for some transformation in terms of, of thinking of herself that way. Now, that's not my job. We, we shouldn't coach our partners, um, but it really brought it forward for her, you know, to be aware of. The other thing that I want to bring forward is this idea of shame. This idea of shame. When I walked out of the front door of the jail, I took a few breaths and I was so grateful Kimmy was there to <laughs> greet me. And I had this, um, you know, conversation with her about, oh, it should have been me and all of that. Um, but I had this feeling and it came and went. And tell me if you can relate to this because there may be 
probably you haven't had my experience, though some of you I'm sure have because I, I, ha I know now from my experience since last year that uh, many more people have DUIs than you ever would be aware of. So it could be some of you also. Um, I had this weird kind of almost like um, schizophrenic feeling because on the one hand, I felt so happy and free and emboldened. Like I just went through this experience of surviving time at a whole other energy level and I feel proud and amazing. And then on the other hand, there's this tight, like my stomach in a tight ball and knot of total shame. Like, oh my God, I am a horrible person. I can't believe this happened. I'm so embarrassed. What will people think of me? No one can know. I just need to go hide in a, in a cave for the next 10 years until this is over with. Because it stays on your record for 10 years, actually. Um, I didn't know that at the time. But that was the feeling of like, oh my gosh, there's this amazing spiritual breakthrough. And I, I like want to shout it from the rooftops. And on the other hand, deep dread and total shame. And I went back and forth, like I said, between those two experiences. And I could feel viscerally in my body the distinction energetically. And I knew I had a choice. I knew I could give myself over to the shame and have this totally derail my life or I could claim the victory and have it totally expand and explode my life in an amazing way. And I went back and forth and I went back and forth. And quite honestly, if you've ever had the experience of sitting on a concrete floor, um, my physical being, right? My physical cells were feeling the effects of that. Um, not to mention our environment is so important, right? We pick up energy from our environment. So I had spent all this time with, you know, people screaming down the hall. Um, one guy was taking his clothes off over and over again. Another guy was preaching to all the other people in his cell about how to live life. And every other word was the F-bomb, for example. So all of this energy, right, is being absorbed into my body and into my system that I needed to release and detox. And I, I did a pretty good job of keeping myself in, in my energy bubble and keeping my energy clean while this was happening. But I had to purge that and I had to make a choice to know what my truth was, which was this was the most amazing and beautiful way to heal this surviving time pattern that I had literally just discovered the day before. Now, would it have been great if the universe had been delivered it in a different way? Perhaps, perhaps there would have been another way, but I couldn't actually imagine another way where I could have that same experience and reinvent my relationship to time in the same way as I did in that scenario, because it literally felt the same as it felt to me as a kid, totally out of my control and not knowing when the situation would end. So it was beautiful. And, and I made a choice to claim that it was beautiful. And even in sharing here on this podcast, I'm continuing to make that choice to claim that it was beautiful. Because transformation doesn't always come in a nice little bow. And it doesn't always look easeful and pretty from the outside. And only we know the truth of what the experiences we're moving through are calling us to be. And it's very easy for people from the outside to make judgment. You know, my dad has an issue with alcohol. He lots of times couldn't pick me up because he didn't have a driver's license. So I had a lot of judgment about people with DUIs. And, um, you know, so I, I assume everybody's going to project that judgment onto me because I was holding that judgment also. Um, but now I can give that up, right? So it's a choice, whatever you're experiencing, whether it's um, ending a relationship, you know, losing a job, um, 
uh, something happening in your relationship that looks bad from the outside, um, financial stuff, whatever it is, you can choose the transformation in the experience and you don't need anybody's approval for that. You get to decide what your truth is. A couple other benefits that have come from this experience. One, I've been exposed to a whole different part of life. So I don't know if anybody else relates to this, but since I've been growing my business and growing my consciousness and expanding my life, I've um, really limited my circle of people I spend time with to you know, really hold a higher vibration. And this experience has thrust me into a whole other a realm of society, like different departments, you know, in the police force, for example. And um, I, I won't go into all the details, but I've been exposed to people and things and experiences that I otherwise wouldn't be. That's actually been fueling my passion for my business because I can see how much this conversation is needed in the world. And then finally, I actually stopped drinking after this happened. So Um, interestingly, and this is why I, I think this is the perfect experience to have happened for me because prior to this, I had also read like a Facebook post from a friend of mine. I had read in a book I was reading that I really loved that the person talked about, you know, just not drinking because it makes you more tuned in to source. And, um, you know, I never have drank a ton, uh, maybe in college, (laughs) but it's never really been like a defining characteristic of mine. Like I'm always, you know, grounded and, and focused on what matters to me. And maybe I happen to have some drinks. And so I decided to stop drinking because I decided that this was part of like my three series message um, of the universe inviting me not to drink because when I'd read those couple other things I had had the thought of oh that sounds like a good idea yeah that makes a lot of sense I would like to be more of a clean vessel for spirit and um, and I mean this was like a matter of a couple of weeks that this had happened and I'd had this thought and then Um, I had this experience. So I literally took it as an invitation to stop drinking. And I think, you know, in the last almost year, um, I've, you know, toasted champagne with people a couple of times, but I literally, you know, cut it out of my life. And, And I actually had to look at how it didn't take long or it wasn't hard. Um, but there was a moment of who am I if I don't meet someone for a drink, right? Um, even though it wasn't a big part of my life, it was a very integral part of my life at a low level that I was able to just let go of. And, um, you know, I'm not here to preach about that or anything. I am here to preach, get an Uber, like literally don't drive, uh, make a plan. You know, had we stopped to make a plan, we would have been in an Uber. So I'll preach that. Um, but I do feel that those of us who are, leaders in this journey of transformation are being called to keep our vessel clean and whether that looks like clean eating, not drinking, etc. So uh, I've been enjoying that process. I don't know if it will be forever. I'm not making some grand declaration, but I do know that it's felt really good on this end. So then I got arrested. It's still kind of weird to think about and weird to say aloud. And yet the beauty, one of the things I've noticed, and I think, you know, this is part of what it is to be a leader of transformation, at least in the form it comes through me, is I live it first. Spirit gives me the opportunity to live through it and kind of grow my own muscle and my own faith, my own knowing of my truth and of the truth of how the universe works. And then I share it. And often when you are that person, which I'm guessing a lot of you are, it can look, it it can be kind of a pain, (laughs) right? Because sometimes it comes through us in this way that lets us be a vessel for it, but it's not pleasant all the time. So that's what I feel about this experience of being arrested. That's what I feel about it being like the most profound spiritual experience to date 
And I invite you, whatever it is you've got going on, do not allow it to get entrenched as shame, but choose to find the healing in the journey and choose to see the invitation spirit has brought forward for you to become more of who you truly are and more of who you're meant to be. This is Darla Ledoux of Retreat and Grow Rich, and I look forward to being with you again in the next conversation in this series, Transforming Out Loud. Please, please share your comments over on social media. Please let me know that my experience has been in service of someone somewhere to connect with your truth and choose love over shame and fear. Bye, everyone. People won't pay for transformation, they told me when I started my business. Thankfully, I didn't listen, or at least I didn't listen for very long. This is Darla, and I have been offering transformational retreats as a part of my business model for years. I've earned millions of dollars through hosting retreats. And here's what I want you to know. It just may be that overtly adding the transformational component of your work into the way you offer your services is the most powerful and profitable choice you can make right now. I'm talking about not sneaking transformation in the back door, but actually designing your business around this work you hold so dear. If you're intrigued, I invite you to check out our brand new live retreat experience just for leaders like you over at retreatandgrowrich.com forward slash retreat. Extraordinary retreats require exceptional leaders and we can't keep sneaking our magic in the back door a minute longer. The world needs your genius. Retreatandgrowrich.com forward slash retreat. Head on over there today.